There is a new bill that is up in the House of Representatives. I think this is a brilliant bill, very important bill. It's called the Lakin-Riley Act. The Lakin-Riley Act is a bill that would require the Secretary of Homeland Security to take into custody illegal aliens who have been charged in the United States with theft. Why theft? Who's Lakin Riley? Lakin Riley is that university student who was, who was murdered allegedly by an illegal alien. Uh, why theft here? You could see why and say, well, okay, that they have to take into custody illegal aliens who murder people. I'm not even sure that those guys always get sent to prison. But why theft? Well, it's because this guy, the, the man who allegedly murdered Lakin Riley, illegal alien arrested after entering the country illegally in September of 2022. Fast forward to 2023, the guy gets arrested in Queens, New York, for endangering a five-year-old son. Five-year-old son was arrested, or the five-year-old son, rather, was riding on the back of a moped without a helmet. Uh, That's not good. That's according to the New York Post. Then, about a month after this arrest in New York, he and his brother were accused of stealing from a Walmart in Athens, Georgia. So you're noticing a pattern here. He just keeps getting arrested, keeps getting released. Uh, when he gets arrested for shoplifting, he's given a little citation for misdemeanor shoplifting, and he's let go. And then, allegedly, he murders this poor girl. So what's urgent about this act is we need to stop these criminal aliens from killing innocent Americans. We need to stop the invasion of foreigners across our border that Joe Biden is encouraging. But what's really brilliant about this act is, one, who could disagree with this? An illegal alien gets charged with a crime, and they have to be taken into custody. They have to be arrested. Now, I'm not even saying deported, just they have to be arrested. What Democrat can say, no, no, we support the right of illegal aliens to shoplift. No, no, Democrat. I don't care how crazy you are. You, you can't really say that with a straight face. And then the second thing that's brilliant about this is it's called the Lake and Riley Act, and it puts a face to it. The Democrats are really, really good at putting faces to problems. Look at Tim Kaine. Tim Kaine is inviting the first person born via IVF. So we think, well, that's good. That's good that that person exists. Never mind all the people who have been blotted out, who have been killed with the encouragement of Democrats through abortion. You don't, you don't see those. But in this case of this one person through IVF, we say, that's oh, good that that person exists. You don't see the face of the babies who were then aborted because of the IVF and surrogacy industry. You don't see the face of the babies who were intentionally deprived of their mothers or their fathers because of the IVF and surrogacy industry. You don't see the people being bought and sold. You, don't see, you just see the really the nicest aspect of the thing. And then when it comes to illegal immigration, what happens? I mean, even more at the State of the Union, you you don't see the faces of the babies who are being killed. It's just the mothers who got to have their rights and, oh, we're putting that person there in the gallery to highlight them during the speech. Okay. Case of illegal aliens, though, we never see the faces of the victims of the illegal aliens. We're all, in a way, victims of the illegal aliens because they're violating our most basic laws and undermining our right to self-government. But but you don't see the victims of the, the people who are killed. You just see the dreamers, the poor, helpless foreigners, give us your unwashed masses. No, what this act does is says, no, there are real victims here. They need to have even some basic modicum of justice. And we dare you Democrats to vote against it. Right now, go to goodranchers.com, promo code Knowles. Did you know that mRNA vaccines are approved for use in pigs in the U.S.? Bleh. Not to mention, 85% of the beef sold in your local grocery store is imported. In fact, over 5 billion pounds of meat was imported just last year. The mystery continues to grow in the meat industry, and every day, I am more thankful for my Good Ranchers subscription. I don't have to worry about imported meat or unknown vaccines and the food I feed to my family every day. During their Say No to MRNA sale, Good Ranchers is offering you a free 10-pound Easter ham with any subscription. Their ham is fantastic, and unlike the pork at the store, it is guaranteed to be free from MRNA vaccines. This is a $119 value that you will get for free with code Knowles, K-N-W-L-E-S, at goodranchers.com. What I love about Good Ranchers is that it's the uh, best quality meat out there and the price is just unbelievably low. But the second thing I like most about Good Ranchers is their commitment to transparency. They think you have a right to know exactly what's in your food and they're not afraid to show you. These guys are the best. Go to GoodRanchers.com. Use code Knowles, K-N-W-L-E-S, to get your free Easter ham today. Every subscription will come with a free Heritage ham, 25 bucks off, and Good Ranchers lifetime quality commitment. GoodRanchers.com, code Knowles, Good Ranchers, American meat delivered. Big night for President Trump. He won basically every single 
state. Uh, there was one exception to that. Nikki Haley won Vermont. Otherwise, Trump won everything. Here is President Kofefe's victory. Well, thank you very much. They uh, call it Super Tuesday for a reason. This is a big one. And they tell me, the pundits and otherwise, that there's never been one like this. There's never been anything so conclusive. This was an amazing, an amazing night, an amazing day. It's been an incredible period of time in our country's history. It's been sad in so many ways, but I think it's going to be inspiring because we're going to do something that, frankly, nobody's been able to do for a long time. We've... Very exciting for President Trump. Uh, Nikki can say that she got uh, a victory. She got a victory in Vermont. Uh, but other than that, the writing's on the wall. As of this moment, as we are recording this show, Nikki Haley has not dropped out of the race, uh, but she is going to. Every outlet is reporting that she is, is set to make a speech sometime this morning. So I've instructed the producers. I've said, hey, producers, uh, go out there, find Nikki Haley's speech, uh, if it happens, pipe it in live. Otherwise, we'll get to it tomorrow. Th there won't be any news breaking. We all know it's going to happen. It, you know, if not now, it'll it'll be tomorrow. If not tomorrow, it'll be the next day. But it is going to happen. Uh, what will be interesting about the speech will be Nikki's uh, reasoning for how she can get out. Because Trump made this point a couple of weeks ago. He said Nikki Haley has put herself in a tough spot where she can't she can't figure out how to wind down the campaign because there was never a path to victory. So so the campaign was always, well, we're, we're going to go despite impossible odds. We're just going to, we're, we're not getting out of this race. I'm going nowhere. Uh, we're, we're in it for the long haul. Now, every campaign ends for the same reason. That's that, that the campaigns run out of money. So the Koch Network decided to pull their money from Nikki's campaign weeks ago. It, it's just been a, a matter of time ever since then. Um, so is, is her argument that, okay, now the voters have made their decision clear and, and so she's going to endorse the Republican nominee? Well, she just came out and said she might not endorse the Republican nominee, despite the pledge to endorse the eventual nominee, which was the, the way that she got into the debates in the first place. Is she going to say, I'm not going to endorse the Republican nominee? Okay, well, What's she going to do then? She's going to throw away her vote. She's going to endorse Joe Biden. I can't imagine that. So I just, it'll be very, very interesting to see what the reasoning there is. But in any case, you know, I, I know a lot of people are not happy with Nikki Haley for sticking in the race this long, but I think it's pretty impressive. The woman was uh, considered a super duper long shot candidate when she first announced her candidacy. Everyone thought that the stronger candidates would be people like DeSantis, certainly, even Vivek, uh, some suggested Chris Chrissy and a Chris Assange, Mike Pence. There were others on there. People put Nikki Haley pretty low on the list, and she made it to the number two spot. So, you know, good for her, but all things must come to an end in this life, and some sooner than others, and it looks like Nikki's campaign is headed in that direction. So Trump uh, has now effectively secured the nomination, but not, not officially secured the nomination. There are still more, more votes to go. Uh, the Super Tuesday contests awarded more than one-third of the Republican delegates, which means that they awarded m more than 70% of the number of delegates that you need to secure the nomination. In his speech, you heard a part of it there. I don't even think he mentioned Nikki Haley. So it is over. Man, what a great clip that was, huh? It was good, wasn't it? We can, we can be honest with each other. Well, if you agree with me and you, then you got to ring that bell. Subscribe. We'll see you next time.